if you want to modernize your forehand, if you want less of this, <laughs> but more of that. You're in the right place. Now, what I'm not saying is that we're going to make crazy grip changes. At a rack level, those grips actually hurt you more than they will help you. And if you want to improve your rating from 3.0, 3.5, 4.0, 4.5, .0, you don't need extreme grip changes. What you do need is to implement the fundamentals of the more modern game correctly. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. Now, when I'm talking about the more modern game, I'm talking about heavy topspin, way higher swing velocity, and also more power. And that is what everybody wants. And yeah, again, you don't need those grips for that. So your Eastern forehand grip and your semi-Western forehand grip are perfectly fine. But what we're really dissecting is the difference between what you may have been taught 15, 20 years ago and what we now routinely teach juniors. But for whatever reason, we don't really teach it to adults. And it's the same thing for adults or for kids, mainly we're using the hips way more and we're loading differently. So here's what it looked like when I was taught. Soft Eastern grip. Eastern grip was already more, yeah, modern back in the day, almost the continental grip. And it was racket down and back, turn, right hip back, but there was no rotation. So we'll get into that later. Racket down and back, the side with which you're gonna hit later points to the side fence, tip of the racket down and back. Yes, you go and load high. You have a really long extension and then you catch the racket with your left hand or then you go over your left shoulder. So let's see if I can still do it. Are you ready? Okay, let's see. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, look at that. feels really weird. The problem is with that is if I'm accelerating how I'm able to do it now with this racket, here's what's going to happen. Okay. Oh, that was late. I just hit him out. I hit him way out. So let's look at all the components and then I'll show you how to modernize them. More spin, more pop. So number one, as I said, the grip Eastern grip and semi-Western grip are completely fine. Now, what you always have to understand is your grip dictates the swing shape and your contact point. But I've made a video about that and I'm gonna link it in the description down there so you can really check out what the different grips do to your contact point and your swing. Now, what we want in a more modern forehand is a much deeper unit turn. So I never was cued to use my left arm other than to point at the ball and then catch the racket. That is kind of not necessarily wrong, but it's not giving you the extreme load that you want. And the load comes from your legs. So if I'm just reaching my arm out here, it's very easy for me to be upright and very stiff, take the racket just down and back and then swing forward. Now I want my left arm to come around so that I can almost put my chin onto my left shoulder. And immediately when I'm doing this, you see what my hip is doing, my right hip. And then if I allow my body to work the way it wants to, look at what my right hip is doing. Instead of just going down and back in a linear way, in a straight forward line, I'm now coiling down and back and initially away from the ball. And what that does is then later, when I'm unloading, I'm getting more into a rotation, into an angular movement. So it's not just down and back and forward, it's now down and back, turn a lot heavier. And you see how I'm sinking into this load here. So this is where my power comes from. This is where my top spin is coming from. This is where my acceleration comes from. All of the above rolled into one. So turn, 
And then you see that in the footage, I've chosen a different stance. I was taught everything is closed stance. Actually, I got yelled at when I then later on started using a semi-open stance because that's just how your body adjusts to balls that are faster and that are wider. So trying to do this, running wide for a ball and then hitting with a closed stance is not really as adaptable. So it's much easier to use a semi-open stance. And that is, for the most part, what most players now choose in regular baseline rallies. There's an open stance, I've got a video on that, I've got a closed stance, still applicable when the ball is a little shorter and I can move up. But if I'm just rallying from the baseline, I find myself mostly in a semi-open stance because it helps me with the load. Now look at my racket face. Look at it. By the way, it's the new E-Zone Yonix. It's a great racket. Just a shameless plug right there. Anyways, moving on. When I was taught racket face points to the side, I want to balance a penny on the frame. And that per se is not wrong. You're still getting a good shot out of the ball, but you're not getting more topspin on the ball. Because as I said in the intro, if I'm starting to accelerate, that thing goes over the fence. So now we're seeing on the take back already and try to do that with your palm first. Palm out, palm out, palm out, palm out, and then down. And this is where the grips come into play. So now you have somebody like, for instance, Alexander Zverev, and I'm gonna show you footage there, who literally has the racket face closed on the take back. And Ash Barty, for instance, not quite as extreme in her grip, is tilted about 45 degrees. But what they all have is they have a much higher take back with the racket face pointing away and coming down. And what they're doing is they're just simply using gravity to help with the acceleration. So I'm putting energy into it from here on out. Now I can let the racket drop and drive through. And if you then look at my footage, I'm at about 45 degrees. I'm not completely closed because I don't have as extreme of a grip. So you hear, load. Now my racket face is closed. I'm letting my racket come up to the ball and I have it closed or neutral on contact point. But you see this here really is where I'm getting my load. And that to my mind is the biggest difference from what I was taught to what I'm actually using now. So here I can step and then I come through. Let's talk about the finish. It was all finished over your shoulder or catch the racket. Again, not per se wrong. However, again, tennis is a very situational sport, so it really depends on what you're trying to do with the ball and how the ball's coming in because that will dictate your finish. So for instance, you see a lot of players now finishing over their biceps. They hardly ever come over their shoulder. They do some, but then of course you have the buggy whip, you have Rafa Nadal, because he gets incredible topspin on the ball that way. And then you have a Federer or you have an Ash Barty or a Sabalenka, and they're finishing around the bicep. Now, when they're hitting, for instance, a really short little dink angle, they might finish over the hips. So that over the shoulder, finish over the shoulder, is also a little bit of old school teaching. Not necessarily wrong, but maybe not always correct either. The hips, biggest difference between what I was taught and what we're seeing now. What I'm using now, because I had to evolve in my technique as I was playing. But what I'm definitely using is my hips. So the cue down and back here, and then holding your side, staying sideways, and doing just this is really gonna block a lot of what you want. You want that angular motion and your hips actually precede your upper body because we're talking about using the kinetic chain from the ground up. By pushing up and off the ground, I'm uncoiling from my legs up, hips come first, 0 0.0000 something seconds, and then my arm comes around. So if I'm relaxed enough, 
absolutely let that happen. Do not block it because that is combined with a slightly higher take back with closing the racket face, using the drop here, and then using that angular momentum. That is your source of more topspin. And because of your topspin, better neck clearance and more control. And that is when you can start to really accelerate in your swing and get some more pop on the ball.